we've had this. Good. <laughs> well, it's good to know. <laughs> and we, we've had the uh, time and determination to visit all the national parks. So uh, obviously we can't cover in detail all 63 of them. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why not. But, well, Jeff, I'll, get, I'll do it with you later. <laughs> um, but so I, I tried to, we tried to put them in some sort of order, which we'll talk about in a minute and give you some highlights. And we have a little handout there so you can follow along. And if any of you can't understand me because I'm mumbling or speaking too fast or whatever, um, just tell me. Okay. <laughs> so how many of you have a um, senior pass for the national parks? Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, how many of you are over 62 and do not have one? They would have been <laughs> in here. <laughs> oh, I keep forgetting to bring mine with, so I have uh, four extras. You just have to be me. <laughs> I, yeah, right, exactly. I, I, keep, uh, I, I keep leaving it at home. Uh, which one of the things I want to talk about today is uh, packing and so on. Um, I'm sure all of us are travelers and experts at that, but these are two things. Um, all right, so there's 63 national parks. There'll be 64 in April. Um, the newest one is Akmulji Mounds, which is right outside of Atlanta which has a 3,000 year old uh, indigenous civilization remains. When I went there on a Tuesday morning, they're the only people. <laughs> so hopefully become more popular, it's a national park. Uh, there were 58 forever, and then people have gone on a kick in the last 10 years in adding parks. I really don't understand the process other than it's clearly political, because some things have become parks that um, Okay, <laughs> and other things should be a park in my mind and aren't yet. <laughs> uh, but we'll talk about the newest parks as part of this whole process. So the park system has 426 park units. So park units, in addition to the national parks, are things like um, uh, Painted Rocks in Michigan, uh, the FG Mounds uh, in Iowa, um, possible islands, things like that. Um, and then what happens is some of them get nominated from the monument status up to uh, the national park status. So that's what's happened in the last five. For all you care about that kind of stuff, good. <laughs> so we, we've been to all the national parks and 400 now of the 426 units. Um, the ones that are missing is eight in Alaska that you got to fly into, like the uh, Bering Strait. I don't think we'll make that one. Probably not get to Guam. Uh, but there's lots of stuff out there to see. Um, the least visited annually, and you'll see why in a minute, is American Samoa. Last year they had 1,887 registered guests. One reason they were very difficult to register, so they probably had 10 times that amount. But. Uh, and then the Gates of the Arctic, which I'll also show you, which is a fly-in park in Alaska. And the most visited annually, Smokin Mountains, with 13 million visitors. So our favorites, uh, Glacier, we're going for the fifth time this coming year. And that's Glacier right there, we'll talk about that in a minute. And Big Bend, which is in the, the small triangle of Texas on the Rio Grande. And for me, Katmai, which is uh, my favorite Alaskan park, because of uh, all sorts of crazy stuff going on there. Uh, my least favorite is Cayuga Valley, which uh, basically is a drainage ditch. Uh, that's, the, that's the Cleveland River that caught on fire back in 1966. <laughs> and what they did was they drained the uh, Chesapeake and Ohio Canal, which connected uh, the Atlantic Ocean with the Great Lakes. That's what this is. So. A lot of nice mosquitoes there and other good things. <laughs> uh, the newest that's open, open in 2021, New River Gorge, which is in West Virginia, which is basically a big bridge, <laughs> which you'll see. Um, best National Park Highway, I mean, everyone talks about Route 66, which 
great highways, there's a lot of great highways. But to me, US 89, because that starts out in uh, Waterton Nash, or Provincial Park in Canada and goes all the way to Nogales, uh, Mexico, and it touches on uh, Glacier and Yellowstone, the Grand Tetons, and Bryce Canyon and Grand Canyon. So you just take the one road and a month of your life and you get to see all those great places. <laughs> um, with kudos to Emily, who loves the eastern parks, my favorite parks east of the Mississippi, none. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, oh, well, Acadia, all that beauty story. So I, I made the mistake of duty going to the western parks first. I went to Acadia, which is gorgeous. And I'd gone to 40 years ago and thought it was like the end of the world, spectacular. But it, it's tough to compete with the western parks, which are twice as tall and have twice as many whatevers. Uh, so Judy was like, okay, well, I guess we can do that on the east now. <laughs> uh, helpful suggestions. We talked about the National Pass, the Senior Pass. It's great. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but we love to travel in the shoulder months, spring and fall, because the families are not there, the heat's not there, it's easy to get reservations, and it's still uh, beautiful. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and as always, anything in life, get off the road, just go in a hundred yards and your world changes because most people are still on the road. Um, be amazed what happens after a hundred yards. Uh, especially post COVID when everybody was on the road, really urge you, and especially with the big parks, to plan two years in advance. I know it sounds crazy, but last year, we made reservations for this place for next year. And we barely barely got in. Uh, that, that's the mini glaciers lodge in Glacier. Uh, and now they're even having road passes in Glacier and in Zion and probably some other places that you have to get. So uh, advanced planning for the big places. I, I see a hand raised, either that or you're scratching your ear. <laughs> but we can hear you. <laughs> But the recording won't. Oh, oh right. Ah. <laughs> so <laughs> my question is, uh, are you talking about for like lodges versus camping? Is it is it as like two years for camping too? I, I as far as I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, like the state, get the Peninsula State Park for years. You got to sign up January first, right, for the state. So it's the same concept, except for uh, the lodges will sign you up for two years in advance, like most of the parks. Um. We like to stay in the lodges if at all possible, just because then you're right in the middle of things. Well, you refuse to camp. <laughs> <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, wait, wait, you, sorry for doing that to you. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we like, I love staying, we love staying in the lodges because then you're there at night and you're in the morning and the animals are right there or the whatever, and you don't have to drive in, you don't have to wait in line to get through the gate and blah, blah, blah. So if you can plan in advance, it really, really matters. And stay in the on-site lodging, I think it's wonderful. It, you know, most of the accommodations aren't A plus, but it doesn't matter. All right, so with that, we'll do the slideshow. And just to share with you how I did this is, Divided it up between the big five, which most of us are familiar with, Yellowstone, Glacier, Grand Canyon, Yosemite, and Rocky Mountain. And then Ken asked me to focus on ones that were lesser visited, which you probably know less about. We'll do that. So the next, the Utah five, which we think are incredibly special, which is Bryce, Zion, Capitol Reef, Arches, and Canyonlands. And then the six island parks, Isle Royal, which is our neighbor in Lake Superior, uh, the Dry Tortugas, which is an hour and a half away from Key West. Uh, the Channel Islands, which are off of the Ventura, California. The Virgin Islands. And American Samoa. And Hawaii. Talked about the least favorite again. Want to emphasize that? <laughs> <laughs> the, the Hidden Jewel, Big Ben, Hawaii, the two parks we'll talk about. The Volcano. Dormant Volcano and the Active Volcano. 
which is our most exciting adventure in the national parks. Uh, and then the eight Alaska parks. And by all means, ask questions as we go along. Well, actually, one of our friends was there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Our so friend. we read a joke that said the only thing um, worse than than going to Burning Man was listening to someone tell you about Burning Man. <laughs> and that's true. This guy went there and he told us this whole story, even though we didn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, no Cumberland Gap. You ever been to Cumberland Gap? All right. So, Emily, we'll start with a picture. We'll start with this one. So, this is the Many Glacier Lodge, and then this is beautiful St. Mary Lake and Glacier, which is our favorite place. Unbelievable. And um, we are big fans of the eastern portion of the glacier versus the western portion. Fewer people, fewer whatever, that's what this is. Uh, excuse well, me, can you step a little bit to the side? You're right. Sure, really how's this? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> One nice thing that maybe people don't know is there is a trip you can take from Columbus and it'll take you to Glacier. And we did that with the kids and grandkids and it was so fun. But definitely get the sleeper card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. that's great. So the Glacier is great. beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the waterfall, the Glacier. That's the remaining glacier and glacier. And this is after our train trip. <laughs> and three of the people are here, Shara, my daughter back there, Judy, we had a great time. Okay. So our, yeah, everything is great. All right, so uh, this is Yellowstone, and why do you have this? So uh, in Yellowstone, all of us run around looking for the animals, uh, and the elk always just come to your lodge at night anyway. <laughs> <laughs> or let me go back to have dinner and there they all were sitting yeah. on the front lodge. <laughs> eating the grass in front of the lodge so again a reason to stay in a lodge but also uh, <laughs> let the world come to you sometimes right yeah go out chasing around for it uh we know that is right smoke pots and yellowstone uh and that's the falls of yellowstone river nothing to do with kevin costner that's just a grandson all right, so now uh, we'll move quickly on to the Grand Canyon. Um, so I think of the Grand Canyon, like so many of these places, if you stand on the rim and look at it, go, oh, that's nice, that's beautiful, and it's almost overwhelming, right? All, again, if you just take 40 minutes, half an hour, and walk a few steps down one of those paths, which are handicapped, accessible, and so on and so forth, and get into the Grand Canyon, a whole different experience. <laughs> so I urge just to get off the rim, take a few steps, get into the Grand Canyon. We were, we were lucky enough to actually walk all the way down and back up again. Uh, what time of year were you in the Grand Canyon? Oh, fall? good question. April. Uh, so we went uh, late April, mid April, so it'd be cool. It was 96. <laughs> Very good question. So the Grand Canyon is gorgeous, especially if you get into the Grand Canyon. And did you just do the south rim too, or? Uh, no, we did all the way to the rim. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes I know the north rim has the road closed until like May. Right. 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 That is, yeah. You can, always go, you can always go around those orange things. <laughs> <laughs> right. We do not recommend that. Just say, <laughs> we're the age now. We're old. We're just say we're confused. Honestly. <laughs> uh, all right. So more of the Grand Canyon. It is spectacular. I mean, well, there's the Colorado River, and some people have taken raft trips, which is great. And the, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. And now we're up up to Yosemite. So there's the falls, El Capitan, and again, I urge you to stay at one of the hotels there. So the first time Judy and I went to Yosemite. Uh, it was uh, the forest fires of that year. <laughs> and uh, our um, range of, of sight was mm, 20 yards. <laughs> so we didn't go back. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
so Rocky Mountain National Park, which is is my first national park, um, uh, being right outside of Denver and Chattanooga, and you get to see those wonderful animals we just saw and mm -hmm. the lakes. It, it just it's just very accessible. Lots of people there because it's so close to Denver. You can fly to it, so on and so forth. But again, you get off the road 100 yards and there's a puppet disappear. So that is the uh, big five. We'll stop here a second. That's the big five parks. So uh, how many how many of you have been to the big five? Great. <laughs> this is really, what a good group. <laughs> That's wonderful. If not, I urge you to get there. These these I think are called hoodoos or hulus or something. Hoodoos. Yes, they are. These are hoodoos. <laughs> so now we're into the five Utah parks. So uh, Utah is the Mormons, motorcycles, and mountains. So a lot of motorcycle uh, groups go out there that think they're still tough when they're our age and you know and they're <laughs> fat boy Harleys and then the, the Mormons who are wonderful people and the mountains which are spectacular. And and one thing I would say about the Utah parks is if you are driving through or hiking, when you go in it looks one way and then as the sun changes throughout the day when you come back it all looks different and it, you can just keep going back and forth for a couple of days if you want to it's so beautiful and it, that great time to say it because bryce which we had before um uh is those hoodoos are unbelievable depending on where the sun is yeah and um if you can get there in spring or fall and lucky enough to have a light snowfall then that's really and most of the parks off of the road that you can park your car and walk in and there's usually different lengths of trails, different difficulties of trails. You can, you know, look usually at the park map when you begin and say, okay, well, I want to do these three trails today or whatever. And then you can do it. Yeah. yeah. These are all nice walkable paths among the hoodoos. This is uh, Zion. So Zion is, uh, is this is not, the better pictures of Zion, but this is all I can find. <laughs> Zion is incredible. Yeah, it's really cool. There, there are sulfur pools in Zion, and they have built beautiful um, walkways that you can walk back into it, and all these pools are bubbling. You feel like you're on a, on a space mission or something. It's just crazy. And if you can get past the smell of the sulfur, it's really beautiful back in there. So that yeah, that, and the first time we went there, it snowed. You know, we had eight inches of snow, and they were, the only people in the park were the park rangers and us. So it was great. Yeah. Oh, this you have to get a you have to get a vehicle pass to get in those. Wow. Because it's so near Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's like so this one, and now we get into the ones that are lesser. Uh, Capital. This is Capitol Reef. So this is like Capitol Reef is like a uprising, ge geological uprising in the middle of Utah. That I'm in the pioneers going west to see this wall. It's 50 miles long. I go, what the heck? It's crazy. Uh, and it looked like uh, the outline of the Capitol when they were heading towards it. That's why it's called Capitol Reef. Oh. Uh, anyway, so it's, it's interesting. And we saw a whole bunch of hieroglyphics here. If I can say that word. Um, Petroglyph. Petroglyph. Petroglyphics. You know, Something like that. The hieroglyphics <laughs> are easier. Petro Close enough. Petroglyphs. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway. Very, very lightly visited compared to the other ones because it was not near any city and um, it didn't have a spectacular thing to look at, but we loved it. To the arches, and most of us have seen a picture of one similar to this. Uh, and you can have Black Canyon. Fabulous. Uh, well, that's the next one. That's Canyon Lane. Sorry. Yeah, there's. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> There's the arches. Um, so the arches are, um, you can just walk, you have ranger led tours through them and make sure you don't get lost. This. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one everyone takes a picture of because it stands up on a hill. But yeah, there's tons of arches. And there are a lot of places where you can, we, we, we didn't do this in the beginning, but later we would start getting guides or getting like asking park rangers if they wanted to walk with us or whatever. We learned so much more from them than we could from a brochure or on our own. So it's worth it to do that if you have the opportunity. Yes. Park ranger is just like getting 100 yards off the road. Yep. So uh, this is Canyonlands, and remember the guy that cut off his arm? The, yeah. 
so these are the little slide cans. You can walk through them. They're pretty cool. I mean, they're about as wide as one of these chairs. Um, and then they got ledgers and so on and so forth. It's, it's, I don't know. Did you think it was unsafe? Well, well, uh, that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wasn't that bad. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it was kind of cool walking through these slots. You see, you just pick, we did last time we were there was right after the guy saw it off his arm. Right, that made me nervous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we heard him speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, this, this is a really cool park, though. Yeah. All right. So Utah to us is very special, and I think it's well. We we do things probably too quickly, but. Uh, we can cover Utah in a week, or in a year, or a lifetime, but you know, a week, a week will do it. Mm -hmm. So now we get to the islands. Um, one of the more least visited parks is our own Isle Royal, which you get to uh, from either Houghton, or Michigan, or uh, Upper Minnesota. And uh, it's basically a forest. Uh, <laughs> it has some uh, wolves and deer that were got there when there was an ice bridge to Canada right after World War II. It got stranded and it was dwindling. And there's a nice uh, cabins there. Uh, so it's a nice hike in the woods. Should it be a national park? <laughs> but it was nice. <laughs> Uh, and I can see why it was least visited. <laughs> so um, second one is the Dry Turf Hugo. So that, that's pretty interesting. This, this is an old fort. So it was a fort that was established after the War of 1812 to beat off the pirates. Uh, and then during the Civil War, uh, it was used as a prison. Uh, uh, Key West, very Civil War bus, you know, it was part of the Union. It never became uh, part of the Confederacy. And so... so the prison down there for the Union was Fort Jefferson, he directed the tours, and that's where Dr. Mudd ended up. You know, he had to say General Duke Church Jr. And then uh, that's where he was sent to. He went down there and treated all the people for their mosquito-related deaths. Obviously, you have to take a boat there, but there yeah. is a, I can't think of what that's called. Where Hydrofoil. You know, you know, yeah, that too, but it goes around the whole thing that where there's water in it, you know, like like a, a moat and there's a moat around that whole area and they i think just for entertainment because you could tell the rangers are pretty bored sitting there because you could walk across this you know is it right right so i talked to one of the rangers out there so yeah what a great place you're in the basically in the tropics you got sun all day there's no the crime out here i said this must be a great uh station for park Park rangers. No. It is a living hell. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so they put some interesting they put some interesting fish in this moat, I think, so that they had something to look oh, at and right. do and take care of. Uh, uh, and so barely, when you walk barely, around, barely a tree. <laughs> they got the Cuba tourists coming on two boats a day and asking the same questions. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> and uh got just each other to look at. <laughs> They said they can't wait to get off of there because he's not sure what he did wrong to cause it. You know? It was so funny. It was like the only negative park ranger ever met was this guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thank you. So it was the Channel Islands. So that's kind of a fancier boat to get to the Channel Islands. The Channel Islands are like an hour off of uh, Ventura, California. Mm. They're very big. They got wildlife and so on. You can camp there and get your permits two years in advance and so on. So <laughs> it's all good. Um, and then we get to the Virgin Islands. So that's St. John. Anybody been there? Char, Char and my daughter live there. <laughs> uh, it's just it's spectacular. What to say. So beautiful. Right. Okay. Then we get the American Samoa. So I thought I'd put a map in here. Um, now I want to tell one story about okay. the plane, American Samoa. So we walk up, there's like five people going to be on this plane. And the first thing they do is we have to weigh you. And I'm like, what? And she goes, well, we can weigh you with your suitcase. I'm like, okay. So I held my suitcase and I stepped on this scale and then they weighed us and they wrote it down. And then they did the same for the other 
four people or five people that were going on the plane. And then when they loaded us into the plane, this little Polynesian woman <laughs> picked up this weight and then she carries it on. And after we all got seated in the plane, she went like this and she put it on this side and she goes, now just leave that there. This is for balance. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> It was an international flight. It went from American Samoa to Samoa. Uh, it's like a 25-minute flight. So yeah, 20, 25 minute flight. It showed on uh, on uh, supervisors and everything else as a 24-hour and 25-minute flight because there's international dateline. <laughs> Which we messed up. So we right. ended up one of the many things I've done is screwing up travel planes. We had an extra actual... hotel night that didn't exist. Right. Uh, <laughs> I know about the international dateline, of course, but somehow I had a brain lock and I made a reservation for the day before. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. Anyway, the park. So uh, you'll see a couple people here in a minute. This is this is a, this is the hill of the park and then a lot of Amer Samoa Park is the ocean itself. It was totally beautiful and the people that lived there, we were asking for directions because there was no signage. And they were all just sitting outside and playing with their kids or whatever and they were like, we don't know anything about a national park here. We're like, well there's a, a national park and they're like huh well we don't know so we kept walking along and then eventually we found it when we came back we pointed out to them where it was <laughs> well they were they were sitting alongside of it <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll show you in a minute yeah so uh getting back to the maybe the map i'm sorry we're jumping around a little bit I apologize oops okay yeah there you go. so all right so america small is basically on the way to new zealand and is along airplane rides in Hawaii. Yeah. Just want to know where it is. <laughs> that was the last of the parks that we visited. <laughs> yeah. And we were the only people there. And that's the plane that Judy really right. enjoyed. <laughs> Perhaps other than being tropical, what are the features of that park? Uh. Charlie the Tuna, uh, canning plants for his fishing. <laughs> uh, they had- uh, There's the kids, yeah. That's the had, group we asked where the <laughs> park was. Uh, it is a great source of uh, linebackers and football players for BYU and the former Pac-12 colleges. They grow a lot of breadfruit. We've had They're a lot of players on. here. You know, all, all these Samoans, remember uh, Junior Sayu, uh, Sayu and all those guys? They're all Samoans. And one reason is that they they have a McDonald's there that they all love. <laughs> so, <laughs> <they're> all <burr. laughs> so this is a beautiful place. It's just it, it, you are in the middle of nowhere. Really, the middle Literally. of nowhere. There's Judy at a restaurant wondering why she's there. <laughs> <laughs> Was that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we ran into a bunch of Mormon missionaries teams. there. They're Most just like the Book of Mormon people. people. It was kind of fun. Uh, is it Samoan guy? Okay. Uh, it's out of order. It doesn't matter. That's right. I think we're going into uh, Big Ben. Mm, okay. My fault. Yep. So this is still Samoa. So that's the family. So this is the park, right? right where the family was, the park was the other side of that wall. They had no idea there was a park. Oh, you mean the hill? <laughs> there was not a single sign that said National Park. <laughs> okay. Which is probably why there's only 1,887 visitors. <laughs> Got to move along. What's that? I don't know. What's that? That's right. No, go forward. If you can. He asked how long it's go. been a park, and he wasn't sure. I said I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. We gotta move along if we're gonna get through it. Okay. I don't know whether you would have heard this or explored it, but was that one of the areas where Margaret Mead did some of her research? No. Okay. Uh, but the, thank you. There was a 1930s author that lived there that did Sidney Thompson. Who was that? What? Oh, Graham Green. Graham Green lived there. So we stayed at the Sidney Thompson Hotel. Um, which we worried was going to collapse and fall on us when we landed. <laughs> All right, so we just briefly went through 
the least favorite coyote, which is fine, it's done. Um, and now this is Big Ben, so just, I'm sure most of you know where it is, which is, which is the map anyway. So that's way south on the, on the Rio Grande, and there's a few pictures of it because we loved it. So we stayed in uh, the nearest town, which is Terralunga, which is an old mining town, which used to have 15,000 people, now it's got 65 people. It's called Terralingua. Right. Yep. And it's right, and it, the big thing about West Bend, or West Bend, <laughs> the big thing about the uh, Big Bend National Park is it isn't near anything, and you would never go by it going anywhere. So we were coming home from Mexico, yeah. driving up because we were going to a convention or whatever in uh, New Orleans. So this is the only place you can stay that is within driving distance coming from the direction we were coming from to get to Big Bend in the morning, you know, early in the morning. Uh, and Judy yeah. had a uh, out of body experience here. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> place, place, place has paranormal activity allegedly. This is the that was the deserted uh, mansion of this mining community, and many people have seen what, and heard what Judy saw. Here. Now, the cutest thing we saw there at, in Terralingo, or however you say it, was we saw a mama quail with little tiny baby quails walking along right in front of us. We were sitting there having our coffee in the morning. <laughs> it, they were so adorable. So what, one back is the, um, that's right, we went back. We saw a glimpse of a Prada store in the middle of nowhere. That was artwork of a couple of French people that put up a Prada store in the middle of nowhere. You think, big I thought it was and here I am standing in Mexico after walking across the Rio Grande, which is how narrow it is. It's There's illegal. No water. What do you do? So I'm, now I'm in Mexico waving back to the United States. So I, now yeah. I'm an illegal immigrant from the dead. Um, <laughs> so when there was water in the Rio Grande, there was great rafting trips down um, the Rio Grande through those canyons that you just saw. But now there's not much water, so. The Havelinas. The Havelina were everywhere. Havelina babies are everywhere. our friends. So this was a great German engineering. Some guy after World War I came over from Germany and used the hot springs right on the Rio Grande. Uh, they had a little, they had a little resort bother. there, which later got deserted after World War II. But you can still go in and bathe in the hot springs next to the Rio Grande in the middle of nowhere. And the, the river right behind where we were sitting in those hot springs had quite a current. So if you were to go in the river right there, it would carry you away within seconds. Yeah, and hopefully you'd end up on the American side. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is like one reason why we like Big Ben. It has so much diversification. It's got the mountains. It's got that hot spring. It's got the javelina. It's got the canyons. Beautiful. We were, we were there in February. Yeah. Beautiful desert wildflowers there if you go in the spring. We were there in February. Yeah. yeah. So they're kind of that's where they're in shape. <laughs> All right, so now we're getting into uh, the newer parks. So um, first one we see. is Pinnacles, which is in uh, Central California. That's where the condors are. Pretty cool. So you have to actually climb up into where the condors are. Into where the what? Condors, the big birds. Condors, got it. This is one of the newest parks, the brick monument to a national park a couple of years ago, White Sands. Little and kids had like uh, sleds and saucers that they would go down those. Well, like you and I did it. No. Well, you did it. I just did it. <laughs> so you got saucers. You got uh, the, the snow saucers that you take down the white sands. Very cool. This, this, this to me is one of the stupid national parks. They just named this so one. So what state is white sands in? Near New Mexico. It's, it's right uh, by Carlsbad Caverns and oh, yeah. near Roswell. Of course, you want to do that stuff. So somehow, this is the only man-made national park. <laughs> Here we are. There must be some Missouri politicians that did that. That just happened a couple of years ago. I mean, huh. the arch is fabulous, but national sure. park. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's another one. This is the Indiana Dunes, where we still have a bunch of interesting homes that were moved there after the Chicago Century Progress in 1933. So the homes are great to go through, and the dunes are nice, but they're not nearly as nice as Sleeping Bear up in northern Michigan or 
a whole bunch of other zoos around, but anyway, that's a national park. It's great. I think the Midwestern states, we didn't have enough to really become national parks to fix stuff like Cayuga Falls and the Indiana Dunes and the Gateway Arch. <laughs> So this is the newest one. This is the New River Gorge, which is a new river. Um, and the best picture of it is this bridge. <laughs> but it's really beautiful in, in West Virginia, but again, National Park, so whatever. <laughs> what state is that in? West Virginia. West Virginia. Mm -hmm. West Virginia. Uh, no, it's pedestrian bridge. Oh, wait, this is, this is new, newer than that. Okay, whoop, that was, uh, that's Akmolji, which is the one I talked about. Oh, yeah. Which is the indigenous people mounds from 3,000 years ago, outside of Atlanta. Um, anyway, that's going to be a national park in April. Yep. Here is the uh, volcano on Maui. Which is dormant, and how many of you have been up there? Quite a few, I think. It's fabulous. It's gorgeous. You can see for hundreds of miles on a clear day, and it's fabulous. There's a road called the Road to uh, Haleakala or something like that. Is that and the road, road to Hana? Oh, the Road to Hana. There you go. <laughs> the Road to Hana is just. Uh, to the side of that thing. That's right. But you got to get up at two thirty in the morning to go up there and be, and watch the dawn on, on from there from the top. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, I agree. So yeah. beautiful. The road to Hana down the road is where Charles Lindbergh is buried. And people yeah. ride bikes great, up great, there. Uh, University it's, of Wisconsin. They ride them down, which is even crazier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then the other Hawaii National Park is the volcanoes, and we were lucky enough to go there. Uh, just after it had uh, erupted and before they started regulating stuff. So two guys, school teachers, <laughs> got this rickety old uh, ferry boat and started giving rides at night out to uh, where, the, where the active volcano was. Where and the active volcano was. So you're going across the ocean. It's pitch black at night. There were like 20 people on this boat, maybe 25. And seriously, there could be a up. whale in front of you or anything, and you have no idea. And these guys are going 60 miles an hour out to this active volcano, and they went out so far, you could see the, the lava, like right here, and you could feel it. It was like 100 degrees out there. Oh there was active lava coming down on pond itself, upon itself, and it was insane. And these two guys, I'm sure they were like smoking doobies in the back of the thing. <laughs> And they were playing like Pink Floyd we had, music. We had the wall. <laughs> and we, our friends were with us, and we kept looking at it. So the Bill kept getting sick, and I was holding onto the back of his shirt so he could throw up over on the side of the boat and not die. And it, it and the boat was, you know, because you're going on waves. It was like this. I just wanted to keep all of my teeth, and it was insane. The most insane thing I've ever done in my whole life. And my our friends that were with us say the same thing. And the house we stayed in and then got buried by the volcano. Oh, the house we had stayed in, which was one of my friend's house, a uh, year later here, here was the, buried uh, by that very volcano. There's a little video of it. It was insane. See all the fire? You can see the active burning lava. And we were just this, like. This is all in water. This is all I wanted to say, should we There's a fire on the water. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure we should be this close? Look at that. It was just crazy. So part of the National Park experience is what happens when you're there, right? <laughs> it's making it out alive. For other people, that might be a boring park. For us, <laughs> it's an exciting park. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, and then we'll finish up here with Alaska, then we'll do a bunch of questions. So um, Alaska has eight national parks, which is uh, eight out of 63. What is that? One, seven and a half? Almost. Yeah. Alaska. <laughs> so... Uh, the most popular one, of course, is Denali, all the way to McKinley. And then there's um, Glacier Bay, which is uh, where all the cruise ships go to, which is down by Juneau. Uh, and then you got the Kenai Fjords, which is drivable from Anchorage. And then Wrangell St. Elias, uh, which is the largest national park and shares with the Canadian Park on the other side, which is Canada. Um, and then you have the 
four fly-in parks. Uh, and you get to these two from Bettles. Bettles is a, a community of 22. But, um, I'll show you a picture of one of the residents because she's begging us to take her home. <laughs> Are they year round and they live there year round, 22 yes. people? Yes, and which means darkness, of course. Blah, blah. The, the, uh, the uh, Arctic Circle is right about up here. And this is uh, Prudhoe Bay, uh, the oil thing, you know, the Arctic Ocean drilling stuff that we all love so much. Um, and Lake Clark, you get to flight from Anchorage, not too bad. Um, and then you have Katmai, which is my favorite for here, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, so these are the parks. And they're, they're all spectacular. <laughs> so this is the lodge at Glacier Bay, which Judy and I stayed at. We went there on the opening day, which was July 5th. <laughs> and the uh, waitress that night was from Monona. <laughs> never know and uh, you see the you see the whales up there feeding you see the bears you see the uh, iceberg calving just the, we saw our first orca whale yeah is this where we saw our first yeah. set of orcas yeah it's just a beautiful beautiful place gorgeous So this is Wrangell St. Elias, a big park. That's how the Canadian border. And this is a former Kennecott mine village. So one time there were thousands of people who lived and worked here, and then it shut down. But now it's a historical mine community walk through. It's kind of cool. Just because, again, it's, a bit of, it's along a 65-mile gravel road. So it's a 65-mile gravel road to get there. And once you get there, you get this cool thing. <laughs> you get to walk in it. And that is great. <laughs> There's Judy and Bill. And that's Denali in the back. Yeah, okay. This is cat. This is uh, the Kenai Fjords, which is fabulous for birding and for the, the glaciers calving. And it's just it, it's a, you get up close view because the, the boats can get in really close. They have seals and uh, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good day trip from Anchorage. Another active retroactive yeah glacial mm -hmm. field. So there is a Denali Peak in the background. Hard to get a clear shot of Denali. Right, Verda? Verda went camping there for a week and it was covered with clouds, right? Yeah. Well, I cheated. I went up on an airplane. So, <laughs> <laughs> so all right. Keep going. It's beautiful. So that, show them where it is. Yeah. yeah. All right, so here we get into um, Katmai. So Katmai is the site of um, the greatest earthquake of the last 500 years in, in on Earth, not just the United States, on Earth. Um, and so all sorts of interesting things have happened because of that. And you see what is up there, and some of the land has never recovered. We saw a lot of wildlife then. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, this. This is Denali. This is Denali again. The wildlife just went right in front of you. <laughs> Bears get really close to you. There's a granddaughter. granddaughter. So it. they, we let. Th there was a lot of wildlife, and down in this like valley, you could see the. I don't know were they elk that were running around, and Tessa and our granddaughter and grandson wanted to go down there and hike. So. We said, yes, we can, but they didn't realize that I could see them from up above. Yeah. They were walking all along the thing. So there were there were animals like three blo city blocks away Judy from the them. paranoid grandma. Yeah. And, <laughs> but, but they loved, they said that was their favorite part of the whole trip. Was oh, I get rid of us. Let them go hike by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> There's the knowing. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yes. Yeah. We were lucky. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Verna was there for a week and never saw it. No. Yeah. And that's typical. This is taken from an airplane. That's why you can see it so well. All right. So this is the fly in. So this is into 
uh, Lake Clark, which is just the other side of the glaciers of Anchorage. And you can tell by looking at that plane that I did not go. Right. <laughs> and again, you get, you get a lot of close-ups of bears. I picked them up in bears. the truck later. <laughs> All these uh, flying parks, you get to meet a lot of bears. Yeah, a lot of bears. <laughs> the bears everywhere. That's the... <laughs> that one looks hungry. Yeah. Um... <laughs> All right, this is going to the next one, <laughs> which is Cobalt uh, Valley. Uh, really remote. You can see how remote the land looks. This is in the Arctic Circle. Uh, and the only people there are the thousands, like the bears and the, the pilot and my buddy and I. That was it. So you're in the middle of nowhere. This is where we flew into out of Bettles, that town of 22 that I talked about earlier. Yeah. I used to be at Katmai. That's, that's uh, pretending to fall into the what was left from the earthquake. <laughs> Again, Katmai, just the sand, drove up and there was yeah. the bears. Yeah, they just like you know, puppy dogs. And, yeah. <laughs> 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 there we were. <laughs> Don't they look hungry? <laughs> the, the scariest thing on these flights is you're the co pilot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a complete idiot with anything mechanical, so it means the co pilot was like, sure, death. <laughs> Anyway, so like, see, you get another picture of how remote all this is. So, and Alaska, of course, is beautiful. Grayling is a grayling that you can catch and eat. And eat, of course. Yep, there we are. Like, hey, <laughs> where are we? Oh, there's Bettles. That's the uh, lodge where we stayed. <laughs> Again, that's a beautiful seashore up there. It's only like 150 miles from Russia right here. <laughs> Look how barren this is. Unbelievable. There's a dingle dog from up there. Yep. Is that a wild dog? No, that was a pet. <laughs> and this is a lady saying, please take me home. <laughs> so she and her, her husband, they're from Peoria. <laughs> her husband said, oh, we need to go on this adventure. And there's this Bettles that lodges for sale. We should buy that and spend that up there. She actually that night begged us to take her home. This is two in the morning. Yep. We were there in August, which is the only time it still there's no bugs and you can cover the roads. So it's neat. The dog lights are great. So that's it. <laughs> um, questions? I looked up uh, American Samoa was 1988, but I think it expanded a lot after that, but initially it was 1988. Well, there you go. Yeah. Thank you. Less bugs. Right. Um, what would it be otherwise? Is it uh, oh, well, yeah. or? Well, first of all, I'm glad I said something interesting. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, you have all these uh, summer flies up there, just like in Canada, fishing. Uh, so there's like a uh, two-week window in late August where in Alaska the bugs aren't around and it hasn't frozen over yet. So it really is like, it's really only like a two, three-week time period that you can go theoretically between bugs and snow. We were in mid-August, up, up, up there, go back up a second. The uh, continental divide uh, runs east and west, not north and south. So as you cross the continental divide, you're heading north uh, until the Arctic Ocean. Uh, everything north goes into uh, the, the Atlantic through the Arctic and everything south goes to the Pacific. So we were there August 16th and we got caught in a blizzard. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> what can I say? I'm just curious if you have any new trips planned. Where are you going next? Uh, well, my children want, want one last trip with me, so I, my son and I are going to go to Egypt and uh, stay there with them. And Judy, hopefully, will agree to go to South Africa. 
and, I, and then I got there's 14 of the national monuments that I haven't been to yet. Um, so my friend and I are going to do Route 66 in reverse in a couple of weeks, and I'm talking him into stopping off at two of those places. So I get it down to 12. Well, and I was just going <laughs> to say I put my microphone up, but we just went to New York. It was the first time the gays fought back. Um, pardon me? First time the gays fought back when right. raided by the troops. Yep. And, um, which is now a national monument, which is an example of what national monuments are. So when we flew into New York, we took the train, uh, the metro, to this national monument so we could visit that national monument. And then we took a couple plays. So we just, um, he's little by little picking off what he has left of the national monument. In June, uh, I invited 10 of my closest friends to go with me to see 14 national monuments in the Northeast, and I ended up going by myself. They all, said, <laughs> they all said, no, thank you. They didn't want to see the uh, site of Teddy Roosevelt's inaugural address in 1905. <laughs> <laughs> I followed Bill on that trip via his Facebook page, and it was, I think it was really very enlightening, and I told him it was really wonderful as, of him to be doing this for the rest of us that really are not educated about these unusual national places that he travels to. Well, thank you, Mary. Thank you, Bill. Mary is my longest standing friend. We've been friends since we were teenagers. <laughs> and what is what was the most dangerous or frightening? What's happened with you? Well, the most surprising was that the Hawaiian uh, volcano thing. We, we weren't prepared for that. Oh, we're going to go on the boat, and then we'll see the volcano, and then we're going to see some uh, fire. <laughs> right, in, right in the middle of it all. Oh, we're <laughs> we didn't, we didn't come near dying. <laughs> but anyway, so that was his game. Yeah, so uh, the national parks are quite safe, I think. Um, America Samoa, there wasn't anything unsafe out there. You just didn't have anything. <laughs> um, and um, the fly-in parks, uh, you, had, you had to be careful that you didn't uh, cross the bear path. I mean, the, bear, the bears are everywhere, and they just wander through camp and whatever. They're, that's where they live, right? So that's probably the most dangerous. Invaded their, their territory, right? Yeah. If I can make this work, I'm going to tell you one quick bear story. So we were once at a national park where it was the last night that the national park, it was the last night that the national park was open, and so we were sitting around the bar with a bunch of these young kids that had worked in the national parks all summer. All summer. And do you know remember what park it was? I do. Okay. Go ahead. Well, tell what it is. <laughs> Glacier. 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 <laughs> anyway, and so I'm like a freak about bears and everything. And so I said to her, I had asked one of these girls, they, they were horseback riding. They were horseback riding guided tours. They took people out all the time that summer. And I said, well, um, did anybody die from a bear this summer here? And they said, yes. And I said, well, how did that happen? And they said, well, um, a young girl was wearing a headset and she was jogging on a trail and unfortunately came around the corner and surprised a mother and was in between the mother and the baby. So then I asked them about, well, you know, like, we were at the same park. We were out on a river, some body of water, and the captain on the boat, I happened to be sitting next to him. We were yakking or whatever, and we looked over and uh, on the trails, we could see like four bears walking in this direction and 10 tourists walking in this direction on the exact same trail. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm saying to the captain and he goes, that happens all day long. He says, those bears don't want anything to do with you. So as the people got close, the bears backed up into the woods, they let the people pass and then they came back down. And the whole time I was like wanting to yell to them, there's bears ahead, bears ahead. So really the thing I learned is they don't want anything to do with you. One time in the same park, Bill and I were walking on this trail, and I kept saying to Bill, I can smell the bears. They're right here. I can smell them. He's like, no, 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 there's no bears. And I'm so we had gone off the trail. We turned around to go back, and as we went back, there was steaming bear poop on the <laughs> same trail we had just walked on 10 minutes earlier. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so good. Uh, well, one thing about Judy is Judy was not a natural traveler. So she, Judy has learned to travel, and th thank you very much for your <laughs> So uh, uh, you've done an incredible job of uh, 
morphing into becoming a world traveler. Okay, um, I'm curious what happened to the two pilots. You said that this, the house you stayed in was covered with lava. Oh, those the two guys, right. Is the two boat guys? Yeah. They just shut, the government shut them down. Oh, they did? Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, not even, yeah. Two Jeez. weeks later, they shut them. They were only open like five, six weeks. Good for the government. Them. Right, right, darn government trying to save people's lives. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was going to ask a question, but I was going to tell you that there was a story about people that did that and got overcome by the sulfurous fumes, and so they were. Oh yeah, I don't know if any of them died, but they yeah, were quite people falling in there, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, when you talk about glacier, did you do the hike to Iceberg Lake? Yes. Tarmac, isn't that a wonderful? I mean, yeah. Now we made noise all the time because we wanted, you know, we were like, "What's you know, name a city and whatever the city name ended, started the next one," because we wanted to make noise to, and we never did see a bear though. The odds of a bear doing something here are very small. So to answer Igor's question, the national parks are quite safe, I think. Bill, Bill, you say that you had no favorites east of the Mississippi. What did, what did you not like about the Smokies? Too many people. Oh, yeah. 13 million visitors. <laughs> <laughs> and then Gatlinburg, which is the southern, which is the Tennessee version of the Dells. <laughs> 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 uh, my mother went there in 1937 and loved it. It was fantastic. But, but in 2017, there's too many people. Just a comment about, about just your, your last remark, too many people. Yeah, Yellowstone has that too. Yes. But, but I want to say that most of the uh, uh, large size, size parks, they have their major attractions to which most people go. But they're big parks, and there are many, that many, many uh, uh, little known uh, attractions, and it's up to uh, the individual to discover those, like the natural bridge and get off. Yellowstone. Hardly anyone goes there. Right. Get off the beaten path and go to. Go and, to and the other thing is being ready to adjust your schedule. Most people don't get up in the morning, and the and the parks, at least when we've gone over 50 years now to these parks, they're abandoned. That you have to park to yourself, and, the and animals, that's where you see the wildlife. That's where the animals are out. Yeah, and the people that are still, you know, dazed when you usually get up at 10 o'clock in the morning, yeah. you see what they look like at that time in the morning, too. Yeah. But, the, but, the, but the, and, and another uh, thing, is so, so if you're willing to adjust your schedule, you'll see a lot more. And then finally, the last thing, you mentioned the uh, senior pass. Yes. When Janet got her pass, they were still free. When I got my... Oh, what are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> When I got mine, it was ten dollars. So it That's looks like if you're thinking of getting one, uh, better uh, earlier than later. Well, now now they're eighty, but they're still a good deal. Still a good deal. Bill, thank you, and Judy, thank you very much. Thank you for sure. having us. This has been great. <laughs>